Fort Sherman jungle warfare training areas. Uh, Fort Sherman was uh, likely existed as long as it did because of the mission it had to support um, jungle warfare training. Um, it was 23,100 acres and about half of that was covered with jungle. It had water, um, the Caribbean shore, it had a shore with Limon Bay, uh, it had the Chagres River running through it and tributaries to that. Um, it had um, a variety of uh, terrain, some high points, low points, uh, swamps, uh, grass areas, and so forth. Um, in 1951, uh, jungle warfare training started at Fort Sherman. And it was run by, over the years, it was run by different organizations and had different names attached to it. In the late 70s, the mission changed. Uh, originally, it was um, individual training of people from many units. Um, and uh, it changed to being unit training uh, for units up to a battalion size. And as a result of the different people and so forth, um, uh, controlling it and uh, change emission. Over time, the training areas changed, and um, jungle warfare uh, shut down in 1999, and Fort Sherman shut down later uh, that same year. Uh, some of the names that it went by was uh, JOTC and JOTB. And uh, uh, JOTB, in fact, uh, took part in um, uh, Operation Just Cause uh, with the uh, active mission. And um, some of the different organizations that ran it included School of the Americas, uh, the 193rd Infantry Brigade, and so forth. First place we'll look at is uh, up here, but before I zoom in, I wanna come out some. This is actually the Toro Point area of Fort Sherman. And this is where the housing and barracks and, uh, and so forth were located. So uh, many of the areas out here on Toro Point were used at one time or not for, um, <coughs> jungle warfare instruction um, prior to them going out and actually performing a mission in the jungle. So um, the first one here is um, actually what used to be an old housing area. Um, on Early in the days of uh, Fort Sherman, this area contained uh, bear, uh, actually quarters uh, constructed of wood, which were later on torn down. And uh, we can see that uh, this area is uh, one of many areas that was reported by uh, Joseph C. Reith. And uh, as I mentioned, this used to be quarters at one time. And if we look at some of the attachments, uh, first off, we'll look at the uh, 1969 low resolution uh, view, uh, which of course doesn't show as much detail, but this is the area we're talking about out here. This is a picture that was uh, taken in the late 60s, early 70s by Edwin Armbruster. And um, again, this is showing Toro Point. You have the barracks here that were lined up uh, along Limon Bay and Shelter Bay. And the area that we're talking about is out in here. 
And I just wanted to put a picture in. This is from uh, 1969. There was a video that was um, uh, entitled uh, Jungle Operations Training Center, JOTC. And, um, you know, there was a shot of the barracks that I showed you back here. You know, I had the sign on there, and that's uh, when they weren't out in the field and so forth. This is where they stayed. The next area is, um, uh, this is a complex of batteries, coastal defense batteries uh, that were on Toro Point. And they were aimed out here into the Caribbean and so forth uh, to defend the canal. And um, they were built in the early 1910s, like 1913 or so forth. And the areas that we have in here um, includes, uh, let's see, we have Battery Baird, Battery Howard, Battery Mauer, and Battery Stanley. And uh, Battery Mauer, if I come in, is located over in this area. And it's possible um, at looking at things through the years that uh, the marina that was built here in uh, on Shelter Bay uh, has a storage area for boats, and they may have uh, encringed on uh, or in also uh, Battery Mauer. Uh, the big guns were uh, dismantled between 1946 and 1948, and after that. Um, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the batteries were used for a number of purposes, including uh, uh, storage, training. Uh, the jungle warfare people would use uh, some of these as uh, training areas, um, mainly instruction, and also for landscape maintenance purposes. And if we look at um, the attachments, okay, the, uh, again, this is the low res resolution 1969 view. We're talking this area out here. And on this uh, canal zone map fragment, uh, it's, it kind of runs off, but it's like here and over. Okay, now this is a map uh, from 1921, and it was revised over the years and so forth, but uh, this is what was used um, to lay out the different coastal batteries and the facilities at Fort Sherman. Um, and the area we're talking about is out here. And you'll notice that um, uh, you have the different battery locations listed. And here's Mauer I was talking about earlier and uh, Stanley, and they have little, little circles and so forth around them. And the reason they have that is that uh, the batteries had uh, observer points and so forth to uh, help direct fire. And um, uh, let's see here. Going back to Edwin R. Brewster's late 1960s, early 70s view, we're talking about this area in here where the batteries are located. And this is, um, this is a view that uh, was from, we don't know exactly what the, the date was on this. Um, but it was uh, from uh, Wikipedia and it's a battery Stanley. And this is one that uh, Bill Max, um, CZ Images had this photo and it's from the uh, uh, early 2000s. And this is also from Bill Mack, uh, PC Images. And this is a photo from the 1920s, and it shows uh, one of the artillery guns uh, in here. 
And before we leave this, I want to go ahead and pull up one of the sources that I used for, for this, um, along with other information on Fort Sherman. And it's entitled uh, The Early Days of Fort Sherman, but actually it covers from the time Fort Sham Sherman came about all the way until 1999 when it shut down. And it uh, not only discuss discusses the post, it also goes through with the batteries and uh, uh, what their purpose was, how they were armed and so forth. And over on the left-hand side here, there's a number of links to old historic pictures and also maps. And the 1921 map that I showed you was, uh, was uh, attached to here. Okay, the next point, uh, this is actually another battery, old battery. Uh, however, as opposed to the ones we were looking at before, this one was for protection in, in Limon Bay, whereas the others were protecting out here in uh, um, the Caribbean Sea. And this was called uh, Battery Kilpatrick. And uh, built around the same time as the other ones, the guns were removed in the same period, 1960 or 1946 to 1948. Um, it was used um, after the guns were out, uh, as with the others, it was used for storage, uh, training purposes, and uh, you know, also landscape maintenance purposes. Now, um, one thing that's interesting about this one, as opposed to the others, is that uh, JOTC set up a, a zoo. And uh, they used the old battery to do this. And they had um, all the different types of wildlife that uh, uh, the people going through training might run into on Fort Sherman. And uh, they had uh, flooded like the, uh, the old gun pits and so forth. And they had alligators in there. I mean, they had birds, they had reptiles, they had you know, all the different mammals, monkeys, uh, and all that type of thing. And uh, there were times when, you know, it wasn't being actively used for uh, uh, jungle training and so forth, that it was open to uh, uh, dependents and Panama Canal people and so forth. So if you look at the attachments, uh, our 1969 low resolution were right here out on this point. And as I said, it, it was designed to protect Limon Bay. And uh, again, this is a CZ map fragment. And, uh, and this one actually has it labeled as uh, Fort Sherman Zoo. So we're right in here. And our 1921 map from the early days of Fort Sherman shows uh, Battery Kilpatrick out here. And once again, we're, we've got the gun emplacements, but we've also got uh, the observer points and, uh, and et cetera. And going back to the same photo done by Edwin Armbruster, uh, late 60s, early 70s. This right in here is the uh, Fort or Battery Kilpatrick. Now, this is a picture from uh, Bill Max CZ Images and um, believed to be a, have been taken in the 1920s, but uh, the battery is in the background here. Here's another old photo and the date's not known. Um, it was uh, uh, believed to have been taken when uh, some housing 
and facility studies were done a long time ago, but uh, this is better to Kilpatrick. And finally, we have the, one of the folks going through jungle warfare training is uh, getting to have an up close and personal uh, experience with the boa constrictor. And this is actually another photo from uh, uh, the 1969 video JOTC, as was the guy holding the, uh, the snake. And you can make out the battery in the background. Uh, they, this class has just graduated. They're passing a review on the old airstrip and you can see just the edge of one of the barracks over here. Okay, the next spot um, is over uh, across Shelter Bay and uh, over by the uh, marina again. And this is uh, the former location of uh, Sherman Tower uh, that was used for, uh, for training. And <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, of course the tower is long gone, uh, but it's had many encroachments over the year too, uh, both by the marina and doing construction and with boat storage. But also there was a period of time when uh, improvements were done to the breakwater, which runs out here. And during that construction, it appeared that they stored uh, material and equipment and all that all along here. So looking at our 1969 low res, we're talking this point right here. And with our map fragment uh, with canal zone, it would be in this area right here. And uh, back to the same photo from uh, Edwin Armbruster, late 60s, early 70s you can kind of make out the tower over here. Okay, now we're moving out of the main area of uh, Fort Sherman. And uh, we've moved down uh, S8 Road, which runs from the main part of Fort Sherman all the way out to Fort San Lorenzo and beyond. And Fort McKenzie was also uh, a former gun emplacement that was put in in the uh, early teens, 19 teens. <laughs> and um, as you can see on the current view, it's, it's still fairly clear over and around the, uh, the battery itself but we're in, in the midst of a uh, dense jungle. And um, originally this was called uh, Battery Shaggers 2, and then later renamed to uh, Battery McKenzie. And uh, the guns just as on uh, Toro Point and uh, uh, were dismantled between 1946 and 1948. And um, after that, this one had uh, kind of a different uh, uh, life. Uh, at one point, they used the, uh, this in the area to actually billet some of the, the, the troops. Um, in the 1970s, it was used for uh, field operations for jungle warfare training. So when they were out, you know, training in the jungle and so forth, the operations were run out of uh, McKenzie. Also, Battery McKenzie at one time was the location of the, uh, uh, the zoo before it moved back to uh, Battery uh, Kilpatrick. And later, uh, it, the uh, battery was used by uh, special forces. And if we go to our 1969 view, 
uh, you can, even though it's low res and so forth, you can make out that, you know, there, there's a clear spot there in the jungle. And here's a photo from the 1920s. And um, this is um, from uh, CZ Mac, uh, Canal Zone Images, and it shows some people who were fortunate enough to have tents to live in on top of the battery. And I put this in here. Uh, I mentioned the S8 road that comes out of uh, Fort Sherman and, and runs along the batteries and out to Fort San Lorenzo and beyond. And this is a photo that I took of S8 road in uh, January of 1973. And this is actually one of the more open areas of uh, S8 Road. Um, once you get beyond this, uh, the road was uh, up and down and curved and curved, and it was gravel. And uh, during my time in the canal zone, more than uh, one person ended up on those curves running, you know, losing traction, running off the curve, and down an embankment in, into the jungle. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I was there on Fort Sherman in February of 2020, and we were in a coach, and uh, the coach, we decided we wanted to go down past uh, some of the places we knew along the way, and also go see what uh, Fort San Lorenzo looked at that time. And uh, number one, the road was in horrible shape. Uh, so we were shaking around, but the other thing was all the way down S8 Road, the, uh, there were branches scraping the top of the coach and the sides. Now, before we leave this area, I wanted to talk about another thing that uh, this area is noted for, um, or reportedly noted for. Uh, this right here is Fort San Lorenzo. And uh, the road, S8 Road, which you can't see very well here, actually continues down to this point down in here, where uh, you had uh, Semi Beach. Uh, this is a Chagres River coming out and the mouth of the Chagres out to the, to the Caribbean. And there was also a little concrete dock down here. And um, uh, it, Anyone was familiar with it across the Chagres, this is Pina Beach. And it had like a little sandbar that came across and the dock was right across from that. Okay, next. Uh, this is an area that um, is uh, pretty much off in the jungle, but th this particular area in itself has um, a, a little variety of some lower, uh, uh, lower uh, vegetation and so forth uh, as well. And it's, uh, it's out here in the middle of nowhere. I mean, here's S2 Road and here's the Chagas River. And uh, one of the things... Uh, you know, I mentioned that Joseph C. Reith was the um, uh, the reporter for uh, the Jungle War for Wealth, <laughs> where warfare training areas and so forth. And uh, one of the comments that he made is, he said, "I remember going through JOTC in 1974 on a cloudless day, and we all." heard an airplane fly low overhead, but then see it because of the jungle canopy. And a short time later, it was raining lightly. The rain tasted like nothing I'd ever tasted before. I'd never had the taste of Roundup or anything like that, but if I had to compare it to any chemical, 
Roundup would be it. Now, this particular training area was accessed from S2 Road by a two track, um, you know, uh, trail through the, uh, the jungle. And if we look back at our 1969 low resolution image, we're talking here. Uh, you can see S2 Road there, and there was a uh, track through the jungle that came back out to here. And this is a, another screen grab from uh, the 1969 uh, JOTC video. And this is a guy working his way through, uh, through some of the jungle vegetation. And uh, the sequence that it's in is that these guys are trying to come down here and some of the instructors and um, aggressors would be hiding behind trees and take, uh, uh, take shots at them. Next area. Uh, this is uh, further down in uh, the Fort Sherman jungle. Uh, we have an area surrounded by dense jungle and uh, there, there were some structures and so forth and some area cleared. And it appears that some of this may still be used today. Um, once again, it had access out to uh, S2 Road by a two tire track going through the jungle. And you can kind of see where it comes off of. This is S2 Road would come down and this track would come through the jungle and so forth and come out to here in the location we're looking at. And on our uh, 1969 view, this is where we're looking at here. You can faintly see S2 Road out here. And this is another um, photo from the 1969 uh, JOTC uh, video. And uh, this is one of the um, exercise areas. And they had a little, like, little village set up there. And uh, part of the scenario was that uh, they had a lookout. And if the lookout saw, um, uh, U.S. or South Vietnamese coming, he would holler and they would take down the Viet Cong flags and put up, you know, South Vietnamese and vice versa. If he saw uh, NVA or Viet Cong, he would yell out and they, they would take down the South Vietnamese and put up the uh, Viet Cong or North Vietnamese uh, flag. Okay, this again is an area that's um, it's surrounded by uh, jungle. And over here, not too far away, is the uh, get to drop zone. And as you can see, some of this area is still being used today. Uh, it was accessed the same way as the last place we looked um, out here to S2 Road. Uh, the, the trail through the jungle came up and met the trail from where we were looking before and came out here to S2 Road. Look at some of the attachments here. And this is where we're talking about at this point. And, um, you know, there's S2 Road out here. Okay, and again, from the 1969 training video, uh, they had an area that was set up as, a, as a, uh, a Vietnamese village, this time, you know, straw huts and so forth. I'd like to thank veteran Richard Wyman for putting together all of this 
information on possible places to test in the Panama Canal Zone. I'd like you to all come over to the Military Veterans Advocacy and join with us today. We are further than we have ever been before. We have a rulemaking request that's been granted by the VA Secretary. We have an HR 5026 bill for Panama introduced into the Congress. And we could not have done that without the Military Veterans Advocacy and the leadership of Commander John Wells. There's also a ton of information under the Veterans of Panama Canal that we have submitted to the VA Secretary who granted our requests. So this information might be able to help you in your claims. And if you need help with an attorney, if you're at the appeals level, uh, use our contact button and contact our administrative staff and they can guide you for help.